नमस्ते अभिवान नमस्कार वेलकम टू टू डू इंडिया स्टॉक टूडेज सेशन विल बी अ कन्वर्सेशन ऑन करियर चॉइस विद आर गेस्ट स्पीकर मिस्टर दिवांशु चौधरी एंड डॉक्टर रमेश मिगलानी I'll give a quick introduction for our guest speaker. Vibhangshu Chaudhary is a respected and popular yoga teacher, bringing his years of experience and personal growth to his students. Professionally, he has had a rich background in advertising and a successful career as a professional filmmaker. His life took a significant turn when he was able to extract himself from years of alcohol addiction. as he found solace and purpose through meditation and the practice of yoga so welcome we are delighted to have you with us today evening we look forward to an interesting session uh, dr bijnani over to you i request you to take over the session thank you arunima and uh, welcome devanshu Nice Thank to you, see you again. Yes, my pleasure and a big honor, sir. Big honor. And uh, I saw your uh, option says cottage nirvana. Probably that's how you named the abode where you stay these days. Oh well, actually, it uh, it's it's a it's a stay which is run by my friend, uh, my friend who uh, in who was actually uh, responsible for my initiation into yoga. Uh, so I go there. and conduct retreats um you know it's it's not where i stay it's just a place where i go and conduct my retreats well the conversation today uh, revolves around uh, your life because uh, it can uh, make many important points uh, which can be an inspiration as well as be of great educative value to many young people and i'm happy that uh, you agreed to share Uh, quite a bit of your personal life in this conversation as arunima said uh, you had uh, become heavily dependent on alcohol and then came out of it uh, which is not easy but all the same you have done it and uh, how you got into it how you came out of it that can be very inspiring and the other thing is uh, uh, you chose to uh, for your career making films uh, and uh, when i talk to young people very often i tell them that uh, if there are there are basically two things you know actually we have only imperfect control over life and uh, therefore if we think that something uh, that we do or uh, something outside us can be a major determinant of our happiness uh, we find that uh, most of the things really we can't control and, uh, and therefore uh, wisdom lies in uh, accepting life as it is and seeing how we can uh, make the most of it how we can still live a meaningful life but uh, all the same there are two things over which we, we at least have some control or feel that we have some control which uh, determine our happiness in life and those are the career that is what we decide <coughs> to do uh, as a for our living or uh, as a major part of our so called work and the other is the person we get married to these are the two things that determine uh the happiness so far as uh, the, those factors go we, over which we have at least some control so uh, at least one you are going to talk about in some detail the career i'm not sure whether you talk anything about your views on marriage uh, and the third thing is uh, uh, how you came out of your dependence on alcohol so maybe i will uh, not really talk much and ask you very specific questions you can start wherever you like to begin sir i uh, i passed out of madras international school in the year 1991 and then uh, graduated from hindu college uh, in 1994 i uh, was not uh, one of the bright students really but <clears throat> fortunately for me and pardon i have a bad throat uh, pardon me for that uh, but fortunately for me um uh, television had just come into india in 94 95 and uh, you know i was you know i was good at writing a little drawing a little little bit of music basically lots of little little things in me 
and that worked for television. So I did three years of television and then I was advised by a friend that a person of um, my uh, tastes and talent should uh, perhaps try advertising. And when I came into advertising, I found that all my little uh, interests like music, little bit of reading, little bit of this and that worked really well in advertising. And uh, as you might be aware that uh, it, it is it is an it is a business where deadlines are very stiff, and there is a bit of glamour quotient. I mean, it, it may be it may not be appropriate. However, I think I started to fight the pressures of deadline and the uh, the sudden surge of glamour in my life through alcohol. It 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 was one of the things that numbed me. And as I, as I kept getting deeper into my work, got started getting involved in work, I, at the same time, I start my dependency on alcohol became uh, a little bit more. And I was inherently, I feel I was a shy person and alcohol really helped me get over my shyness. But I never realized when that dependency became a habit. I would, I would, Soon after, I would find myself, uh, my entertainment, it was, it was better to have a drink at home rather than be out with people. And then gradually, I found myself, the dependency became really big. And uh, the evenings sort of uh, started earlier and earlier. And then, you know, a lot of things fell apart. You know, uh, trust, uh, people lost their trust. I started to lie and uh, things generally became difficult when you are heavily dependent on substance. You know, that's how it was uh, for me. And, uh, and then suddenly I realized that uh, alcohol was almost like my oxygen. There was nothing I could do if I, if I, if that burning feeling in my throat and, and in my tummy that didn't give me the comfort. I was, I was, uh, absolutely uncomfortable. So my, there came a point when I was, uh, alcohol did become my comfort point. Yes. So you are on mute. So you turned to alcohol partly because uh, the work had a lot of pressure and uh, uh, you thought you could uh, uh, face it, you could uh, solve that issue uh, with uh, alcohol because, it, as you said, it numbed you. And also being a shy person, uh, this is something which you could do uh, to feel better <coughs> without depending on anybody's company. So that way it helped, but then it got out of hand. And uh, Yes. yes but at the same time, uh, how did you become conscious of it that uh, you need to sort of come out of it? Well, it was because, you know, <clears throat> the people around me started to complain. It was very difficult for me to accept because uh, I thought everyone is doing the same thing. and But the complaints towards me were <laughs> greater. And, uh, you know, then friends did not want to communicate with me at all. I was, um, I was not invited anymore. And even at work, I started to face problems because... You know, my hands were shaking most of the times. And uh, honestly speaking, if if a meeting was fixed post-lunch, you know, say an advertising agency would say, Debu, why don't you come over at three o'clock? I would be very worried because I really wouldn't know how I would stay without alcohol till about 2 to 30. You know, things got that messy with me. Yes. So initially, alcohol solved some problems, but then it created more problems than what it solved. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So that's how you realized that alcohol really was no solution. And yes, yes. And physically also, of, uh, uh, so, mm -hmm. and physically also, one would wake up very dreary, tired, with a bad taste in the mouth. And then in order to kill that taste, one would pour another drink. And, you know, the cycle just went on and on and on. Yes.
So then, uh, what was it that uh, became a turning point? I got very angry and I became ashamed of myself. I mean, it came a point where even in the morning, if I would brush my teeth, there came a point when I found it difficult to look at the mirror because I don't know what I had become. You know, and I was, I was a fairly cheerful boy all along, um, a, quite a merry boy. And I don't know what I had become this absolute, a, an evil incarnate. You know, I had become an acid-tongued monster who had no control at all over his behavior, over his conduct. And I was really frustrated, irritated, angry with my own self. I mean, I couldn't even look at the mirror. And I think that was when I thought that it, it would be good to get rid of this, really. So we, I can't hear. Uh, yeah. huh. When did this type of realization come uh, that you have to do something about it um, because of this uh, sense of uh, feeling ashamed of yourself? And, uh... um, so I, it, it, because people around me, my uh, mother and my sister were very afraid of me. They would be very different when I would walk in, in the evening. I would be uh, drunk. They were afraid of me. My friends completely stopped interacting with me, even at work. I mean, uh, I, I got one film from an agency for a biscuit company. And uh, upon getting that film, I got some money as advance. And I thought I would take my clients out to celebrate. But the celebrations got completely beyond me. And my clients were so apprehensive that they took back the advance that was given to me. And the film went to someone else. So there were lots of little, little such incidents where I thought that what is happening with me? I have absolutely no control over my um, myself. Just a drink is that became my focus. I would wake up in the morning and upon having breakfast and taking a shower, getting ready for the day, I would find myself thinking from where can I get my next fix? So, you know, that, that was no way of living life now. That awareness had come that this is no way of being, of you know, living your life. What was happening? I was spending so much money. I had lost my friends. My family didn't have confidence in me. Most of all, I had no confidence in myself. You know. Well, what is remarkable is that uh, you yourself were quite conscious of uh, what was going wrong. Uh, which is itself uh, a great thing because not every alcoholic feels it that way. Um, and uh, secondly, um, I mean, what I would like to know is whether uh, finally you uh, started coming out of it uh, on your own or did you need any outside help? Uh, yes, sir. I uh, actually called up my um, class teacher from my 11 standard. Um, somehow she was someone I could uh, talk with. And I remember that when I spoke to her, I said, ma'am, I am in a mess. I think I am going to get killed because of my drinking. If you could help me, because she had worked as a therapist at Sanjeevni. And uh, it was around Diwali of uh, 2016. She heard me out and she said that I'm going to send you to someone, um, a doctor. And she gave me the number. I finally reached that doctor. But I would also like you to know that when I... When I went to the doctor, uh, I had fixed up an appointment. The appointment was at 9 in the morning in Gurgaon. And I used to live in Mayur Vihar, which was about an hour and a half's drive to Gurgaon. When I reached the doctor at 9 in the morning, I was already, I had, had my fix. I was quite, uh, you know, sozzled when I reached the doctor, which was on 8th of November 2016. Uh, I think that it was the medications of the doctor and uh, uh, my anger and frustration with myself. And I managed to not drink from 12th of November 2016. You know, things just stopped then. Yes.
So I think this brings out one important point that uh, sometimes uh, we do need a little external help and uh, nothing like having a good teacher. So uh, we've all had some teachers like that in school or college uh, to whom we felt uh, confident to turn to and uh, in whom we could confide. And yes. uh, that has always been a, a great help. I mean, more than uh, what we learned uh, from teachers by way of uh, the three R's, the reading, writing, arithmetic, and English and history and science and geography. I think yeah. what matters most is uh, getting a teacher uh, whom you remember for uh, uh, being concerned and uh, being always there when you are in trouble. Yes, 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 absolutely. And uh, um, uh, she was perhaps, because, because most of, I had lost all my friends to my drinking habit. And uh, being a therapist, I'm sure she had seen instances of my kinds, you know. She was extremely patient with me. She was just so patient with me. I think one thing that really mattered to me was that there was someone who did not ridicule me, who was not humiliating me and heard me out. Because honestly, she was the only person who understood that I was not drinking for pleasure. I was drinking because I could not do without drinking. It had become like my oxygen. And she understood that point. And she literally held me. And uh, it was her her presence that was quite critical in my turn. Yes. Sure, for a counselor or a therapist to have some knowledge and experience is useful. And I'm sure it helped in this case also. But... Uh, Two other things which uh, do not necessarily need that type of qualifications are also important because uh, sometimes such a person is not available and then you turn to a, a good friend. So the good friend can also be a counsellor or anyone uh, can be a counsellor provided the person has two good qualities. One is to be a patient listener. She heard you out. And yes. secondly, to be non-judgmental. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that yeah, was in 2016. And I think soon after that, it was in 2017 that you joined the course on teaching yoga, isn't it? Uh, no, sir. It was uh, 2019. 2019, August. no. Yes. August so you were in the 2019 batch. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. so how were those three years uh, without alcohol for three years? What were you uh, doing during that period? Yeah, I, how did I was, you find it? Yeah, I was very surprised to find myself in the, the first thing amongst lot of things, the first thing that returned to me was good sleep. I had not known good sleep for years. So I would wake up and I would have energy within. I had not known what it was to have energy within, you know. So I would wake up and I thought, wow, this, I feel new, you know, with good sleep. So I started, I started going for a walk. And slowly that walking turned to running. And I found myself, uh, I was running for, for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. And then I eventually shifted to Bhukteshwar in the hills, which is at about approximately 2,000 meters. And at that altitude, the oxygen, you know, is not as dense as it is in the plains. But I found myself running at that altitude and I was enjoying myself. So um, I really took to running, getting up early uh, and walking in the forests, these things came very easily, perhaps because, you know, I was abusing my body for so long. So this change looked very good, felt very fresh. Then the colors, you know, the, it's funny to say, but, you know, the colors, everything became bright. I know it's, it sounds a bit funny, but the trees looked greener. The food tasted like never before. And I generally discovered that I, I was a happy man. You know, all along, I was trying to find happiness in that stiff drink, that warmth, that burning warmth made me feel happy. And here I was suddenly feeling happy without any external stimulation. It, it was like you're born again, you know, you feel that you're born again and everything looked pretty, beautiful, sweet. Yeah. It truly was uh, being born again. You yes. died to your old self. And now it was a new self that you discovered. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. So during this period, uh, uh, how did you sort of uh, express your 
passion for photography and uh, the other associated things like writing and so on, which together help you make a film. Um, I'm sure in the hills you found plenty of um, material for creating films, isn't it? It is, but uh, I don't know whether it's a surprise or a shock. I started losing interest in most of the things that were managing my life, my livelihood. I suddenly found myself, uh, the whole thing of looking at a script and getting all excited, you know, uh, commercial filmmaking, is ad filmmaking, one would look at the script and get very excited. I somehow, when my mind was all fresh, somehow I was losing on that excitement. And I didn't know what was happening. I was finding greater solace in just being with myself and uh, walking around. And maybe I was finding solace in the things that I had missed in the last 15, 20 years. And uh, um, it, 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 I, I, I did not want to get back to the city, which was Delhi or Bombay, interact with people much. Primarily because also there was a lot of shame hanging in my head, a lot of embarrassment going back to the same people again. But also, clearly, I was far more comfortable in nature, in solitude, and, uh, you know, going to bed at a particular time and waking up early and fresh. I also, in the back of my mind, I had a feeling that if I get back to the business of advertising, filmmaking, I'm going to lose the peace, the beauty, the bliss that I was finding in <laughs> doing nothing at all. You know, that's the truth. Yes. Again, you brought out a few important points. Uh, firstly, you know, uh, all these um, things which excite us in the world, um, sometimes they do have a value also, the way your creativity in filmmaking had some value. But then uh, these are all uh, pleasures that we get uh, saturated with after some time and uh, they don't hold the same attraction anymore. And that's the time when we start looking for something which is higher and deeper, which will sustain better, which will give more of lasting and genuine peace. And that is what you were discovering as uh, you were turning within. Uh, and also, when you were looking outside, you were looking outside at the unspoilt nature, the pristine nature, you know, as the divine has created, which itself can be a spiritual experience in itself. So I think that's what was happening. So it was a period of a great transformation in the way you were looking at yourself, the way you were looking at life, and uh, the way you were looking at uh, what really makes life meaningful, what is it that will give you genuine uh, joy and peace? Uh, uh, yes, sir. But, you know, when I was going through all of this, this was 17, 18, these two years. I, I, I mean, I, I, like you articulated that that is going within. I did not know that. I, I could not have articulated. I was just, all I knew that, all I knew was that I was finding I was peaceful on my own without the, the need to have people around me. I was very peaceful. So, but I could not articulate that, oh, I was going within or I was, uh, some transformation was happening. I did not know all of that. I was just finding a lot of peace. I was, it is as if I was reclaiming, reclaiming my life, you know, all the years that, that were gone in darkness and intoxication. It was, I was just reclaiming all of that. Really. So it just shows that uh, we are programmed to evolve in a certain way and the process does not really depend upon our ability to articulate it. Yes. That's not important. Yes. Hmm. yes. So then uh, uh, you can maybe uh, tell briefly about uh, how life has been going after that. Uh, after 2016, when you went through that phase of uh, discovering your new self and uh, started looking at life quite differently and enjoyed being at peace, doing apparently nothing. Although, I mean, you were not doing any external work, but there were a lot of inner work going on without your being able to articulate it or fit it into a philosophy. That's not important, but the process was on. Yes. Uh, uh, it just about articulation. What happened was in the month of, uh, I think, June of 18, when I was one and a half years clean, 
a friend of mine was the editor of Reader's Digest magazine at that point and who had been my friend for a very long time. And she had seen my uh, transformation from a moderate, I mean, I was always a heavy drinker, but I was not a, a, an acid-tongued monster initially. So she had seen the entire thing of being, okay, someone wants to enjoy with a few drinks and then you become an alcoholic, a raging alcoholic, and then you give up. So after one and a half years of me being clean, one day I get a call from her. She said, uh, Devangshu, I have seen your years and I would like you to write your story and I would like to publish it. I was very ecstatic to hear it. So that was the first time when I actually sat down and she said that you can't go beyond, I think, 1500 or 1800 words. And I was sitting alone and I was writing my story and it had not happened before. When I was writing my story, I wept. I cried like a little boy. And I just do not know what was happening to me. After I wrote it, it took me seven hours to write, I think, 1800 words. And it had not happened before because writing came naturally. To me. Give me any topic I could write. But writing about myself took seven hours. And when I finished, when I shut down the computer, I felt as if load from my shoulder had gone off. It's an, it was an undescribable feeling. You know, I felt seven, eight kilos lighter on my shoulder and my neck. And uh, uh, um, yeah, so when you spoke of articulation, this thing happened. When I wrote my story, I felt really light. I think that was something that I had never felt before. Yes. So it was uh, an opportunity for expressing yourself as well as uh, is uh, it sort of added to the healing process that was going on. Yes, yes. And uh, then uh, came the biggest turnaround of my life, which was 7th of August, 2019, when I walked into Sri Aurobindo Ashram once again after 1991, but this time to learn yoga. And uh, I think uh, that was, as you have always mentioned, sir, the word divine intervention, because I had no inclination, no interest. I had, I had no idea of yoga. It, I, it just fell on my lap. And then gradually, very slow, it was very slow, but I think the real transformation started happening from that day onwards. And it is, I feel it is still on that, uh, that it, it is still on, the transformation is still on, yes. So one can see, in fact, uh, three major divine interventions. Uh, and of course, the divine intervention, the divine also needs some instruments to uh, intervene. So the first intervention was through the teacher whom you talked to. The second Indeed. intervention was the friend at the Reader's Digest, who somehow yes. uh, moved uh, to call you and uh, approach you for that article in the Reader's Digest. Because uh, this thought entering her mind itself is a divine intervention. And the third was your feet were somehow directed towards the ashram after a gap of uh, 28 years. Yes. And uh, sort of to uh, take you in that direction to bring you to the ashram was another divine intervention. Yes, so yes. The three put together so sort of, and of course you had the opening, you had that uh, sort of little sort of a seed sown in you as a student of the Mothers International School, yes. which probably uh, made you different from anybody else or many others in a similar situation. Yes, probably. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you know, uh, in, in school, I was one of those backbenchers. You know, I, was, I really wasn't great in studies. So, um, uh, and honestly, I mean, uh, neither did I make any efforts nor was... Uh, there and any apparent effort from the uh, school authorities to direct, uh, let me say, misguided students to the to the teachings, philosophies of Sri Aurobindo or Mother, because uh, there wasn't really, or even if there was, one didn't have the wavelength to understand that. Um, but 
in 2019 what thankfully i was open you know i think that was also divine intervention to to be open and whatever you brought sir uh, dr bijlani what you brought in theory that started to very slowly you know change the perspective towards life it 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 very slowly it it gave us as they say an alternate and that alternate started to make real sense because one had never looked at life like that you know one always believe that it is my intellect which is working to make me that i have become and then there came a point when you realize that there is clearly the presence of higher intelligence and it it is only it makes sense to let that higher intelligence take you now you know uh, if you understand what i mean Sure. I mean, it uh, changes the outlook of uh, a rationalist, which uh, many of us tend to be, especially when we are young. Uh, when you realize that uh, the intellect is important, but it has its limits, and uh, there is a way of uh, uh, discovering truth, a type of truth that is accessible only to levels higher than the intellect, yes. and uh, that can explain life much better than. Uh, looking at it purely from the intellectual angle and for that of course uh, what uh, happens to us in this life the way the type of experiences you went through the type of divine interventions you experienced that is important but along with that also is the uh, impressions that you bring from your previous lives so i'm sure you had put in a lot of that work in the previous lives which brought you with a certain opening for spiritual truths and inclinations which got eclipsed for some time uh in the sort of uh, course of this worldly life and uh, the type of uh, career that you ended up choosing in advertising so it got eclipsed but it can never disappear and uh, yes that's why i mean you probably soon discovered that that was not the type of life that you were going to live and uh, you yourself made a conscious choice to make a break and contacted your teacher yes as you say conscious effort i'm not really sure i i feel that i was picked up and put on this path you know and that's true i mean uh, that's a more enlightened way of putting it uh, even when we are making a conscious choice it is because of that same intervention if because of the same divine intervening to uh, put us on a new path to guide us yes yes uh, um one thing that became a uh, little clear was that you know we are not here to chase pleasure alone i mean uh, that became clear now pleasure for for one could be cars or whatever but i i realized that there is a lot more um, in life than just simply running for pleasure that became clear in in whatever uh, that was given to us in yoga that there is a lot more to life than just pleasure yes that reminds me of a very beautiful quote from the mother who said that uh, i take pleasure in everything that you do but don't do anything only for the sake of pleasure yes 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 uh now uh, you can now share briefly what you have been doing for the last 4 years after you did this course on teaching yoga at uh, the ashram yes so uh, to begin with the intention was never to there was no intention of pursuing it forever but what happened was i was very lucky again to have this friend of mine who runs this homestay near my place in mukteshwar when i learned yoga and i it came somehow it, i took to it very naturally uh, and i didn't i had no idea that i would take it take it, it would come so naturally he said that why don't you come because he used to have guests who would be interested in doing yoga he said why don't you come and you know you, we can you can teach yoga so things began be, began as simply as that i would go start teaching yoga people would come they would be happy things happen but the turnaround happened really in in this year in the month of july uh 
when we got a guest from um, uh, Canada, uh, I, 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 a woman who had similar issues like mine, she had addiction problem and she had a few more issues. She was there for 10 days. <clears throat> Upon hearing her, I could, first of all, I could understand her the way no one could understand, you know. So that was one. And secondly, there was natural empathy for mine because I just knew where she was, how people were looking at it, looking at her. So all of that I understood. And I gave her my practice, what I would do, waking up, my yoga practice. And after 10 days, when she was leaving, the things that she mentioned to me and my friend who runs that uh, homestay made me realize that maybe this is what I should be doing. I should be... Yeah, yeah so th that was when it really happened. And now I am... Uh, this is more... I mean, of course, there's a whole lot of satisfaction in the business of filmmaking because you create something from nothing at all. But that... Uh, that ful ful fulfillment, that satisfaction dies post a few days. You know, you see your film five, six times, ten times, and then it's like, oh, well, you're done. But this feeling when you have been able to make even a minuscule little change, a positive change in someone's life, that feels so wonderful that I do not have words to describe that feeling. I had never known that feeling. You know, so that is a wonderful feeling and I would really like to take that feeling forward. Yes, there's a great joy in giving love, giving love to the right person and in the right form, the way the person expects it or needs it rather. Yes. And uh, again, for that lady who came from Canada, probably again, it was a divine intervention that uh, she reached you as the one who will uh, Guide her not only in life, not only teach her yoga, but also guide her in life. And uh, this friend who was at Bhukteshwar was another divine intervention in your life, in a way. Yes, yes. Um, actually, sir, we spoke about it after we finished the retreat with her. I asked her that because usually, uh, from foreign countries, if you Google, if you look at yoga retreats in India, ninety nine percent of the times you you will get references places in Rishikesh or places in Kerala. You do not get references in cold climates of Himalayas, really, which is Mukteshwar. Even she herself was surprised. And she hadn't done it. A friend of hers had done it. So we were all actually sitting and wondering that how did she end up coming to Mukteshwar? You know, so yes, indeed, divine intervention, really. Uh, oh. Would you mind now talking a little bit about whether you ever given thought to getting married or you think that that part is something which everybody doesn't have to necessarily go through? Yes, that is something that every, everybody doesn't have to go through. I, I was married, of course, uh, long ago when I was a little boy, when I was 27 years old. Uh, you know, you only do you, you burn your finger when you touch the fire. If you don't touch the fire, you'll never burn your finger. So um, I don't think that I, I, I'm not uh, anti marriage as such, but you know, it takes all kinds of flowers to make a garden. But I believe that I wasn't really cut out to, you know, live life in a, as a husband or as a father. Um, you know, I, I am someone who likes being on the road. I really like to be on the road. And uh, I'm not an immensely responsible person myself. Um, that God hasn't been kind with that kind of uh, thing with me. I, I feel like uh, it's a bit of a weight, I believe. I think that, you know, when you are sharing your life with someone else, it could be good. But to me, to a person like me, I think it's a bit of a weight one can do without that kind of load. And... Uh, there are many other things to do rather. I mean, it's good to have a household. It's good to have a family, but it's perhaps better to not have one.
So now turning again to the career choice, which this conversation was uh, primarily about, uh, you did what is considered the ideal, that is carve your career around your uh, passions and inclinations. And uh, advertising did satisfy, did satisfy those needs. You were doing something which you really were good at and you enjoyed doing it. Uh, yes. But at the same time, uh, uh, that can be still, as the mother has called it, a temporary occupation in your life. And uh, one can always, uh, from there, uh, turn to something else, which may be your final calling. So circumstances are created to make that happen. Yes. Uh, if the person is uh, genuine <clears throat> and sincere about uh, living a meaningful life and uh, is not uh, really sort of, uh, totally given to the material comforts and sensory pleasures, but is looking for uh, something higher and deeper in life, which you seem to have a natural inclination for. So that's how that advertising turned as uh, turned out to be a temporary occupation and the disgust that you developed because of uh, in the way it drew you to alcohol and so on yes. uh, was a brief intervention in a way. In terms of a whole lifetime, it was only a brief intervention. And yes. uh, I'm so glad that you came out of it uh, relatively early and still had not ruined your body to such an extent that uh, uh, you could not do much. You were in more or less perfect health. As you said, you could run and uh, do all that uh, exert to such an extent. Even in the hills, you could run for long distances, uh, which means that uh, uh, you really sort of uh, came out of it pretty early and uh, that was uh, the way your life was designed to be. And in a way, it was a blessing in disguise because that's how you uh, moved towards your final calling. I'm not saying that what you're doing now is necessarily your final calling. There may be still something better in store. Right. But uh, at least which is something which is closer to your final calling. That's what you discovered. And the yes. brief experience with marriage that you went through, again, was important because as you said, unless you have the experience, you don't know yes. what it is like. So that experience was important. And yet, probably that is not the type of life that you were made for. Yes. Yes, Yes, I, I agree with all that you said, yes. Anything else that you would like to share or uh, uh, say something by way of inspiration to the uh, listeners, particularly the young people who may be listening or may watch the video later? I can see one of them. I think he was your classmate, no? Pratosh. He has just oh, joined. Oh, he's joined. Oh, okay, great. Um, sir, yes, I mean, you know, I was... <laughs> I, in the business of advertising, um, I was I was pretty young when I joined, and I was considered to be this bright, young, talented Bengali boy, you know. And uh, the the truth is, one may be talented, one may have all kinds of skills required, but if there is no discipline, it is going to one day fall apart. That has been my learning in life. We have to be disciplined for whatever we pursue in life. Even if, even if you're making roads, you know, even if you're putting, laying the tar and making roads, whatever you do, it has to be followed by real discipline. You, you, cannot, you cannot be frivolous with, uh, you know, in the proceedings of life, in your approach to life, um, you cannot be frivolous. Uh, that has been my learning. I think discipline is critical in in, in your approach in, in in your proceedings of life. Discipline is one thing which is absolutely critical. I think that can be considered sort of a, a, the final sort of a message, a distillate of the wisdom that you've acquired through life. That uh, no amount of talent can really compensate for lack of discipline. Yes. Yes. Now maybe we'll turn to the uh, listeners, the participants, if they have any questions. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir, and Namaskar. Uh, good evening, Bebu. I met Bebu in the month of July this year. And <coughs> when he told me about his 
uh, story and his transformation it was like uh, it was it was very surprising because uh, it takes yes there is divine intervention intervention but yes it it demands a lot from yourself you know to uh, many a times god shows us the path but it is we who have to take up the step and proceed on it you know and then only you are destiny will never come to us it's we who have to go to the destiny so that way is devu is a one joyful person to be around i must say and uh, uh you know it is uh, uh, looking and hearing about his journey it really gives us hope you know that uh, the, this is alcohol is something which is like it is a big disease that is that has crawled into our uh, generations and uh, people have actually perceived it as the way of celebration you know and uh, now so yeah it's it it has to uh, they go it has to reach out to much more people your journey so that they get inspired and uh, they actually understand that there is a much bigger perspective to life so they would tell me one thing that i have this question that now since you've been practicing and uh, you know i know you personally and everything uh, when it comes to yoga as a subject and uh, do you enjoy practice more or do you enjoy the text around it more the text around it clearly 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 yeah. text around it. i i second that because yeah it is much beyond the asanas and the text gives you such a beautiful uh, uh, feeling around it the perspective changes completely yes yes absolutely i mean the, that has been the real journey i mean it began with uh, uh, dr bijlani's introduction to sure the mother and sure bindu then from there i i got into ramakrishna paramhansa shri uh, swami vivekananda the asanas will not go beyond say 24 or 28 you know but that is limitless that is limitless you know the joy the bliss the reassurance actually the term for someone like me is reassurance that reassurance is limitless which is giving good sleep cheerfulness uh, there is anger is negligible anger now you get angry or or uh, worried with very little things in life you know the big ones are gone because one is now clearly able to uh, just push the big worries to you know the divine the one has that thing now so yes uh, the text a little more than asanas yes and since you are an avid reader is there any book or any set of books that you would like to share that people should read or one should read to enlarge in the perspective <coughs> about you um i mean two books that come immediately in my head one of course is the power of now by ekhart tolle mm -hmm. and the other is uh, autobiography of a yogi to begin mm -hmm. with a the language is simple mm -hmm. and it will if one has even slight inclination these two books will definitely rumble bring about a little rumble in life yes sure thank you so much thank you ruchi participants if anyone else has anything to share or any question please go ahead you can put it up in the chat box or raise the hand i can see climos in the uh, audience she's from france and had made a short visit to the ashram recently climos would you like to say something or ask something namaskar ramesh namaskar uh, hello everyone hello. I, i was eating so that's why i, I shut down the video here the time is um, 2 pm anyway i wanted to thank you for your um, for sharing your uh, path and uh, i feel this is um, really nice i was uh, curious about the topics the career choice and that uh, uh nice to see that you go beyond maybe um uh, fears and all that you had to go through to do what you really wanted to do 
And uh, I agree um, with Ruchi that the alcohol, there is lots of diseases because we only know to celebrate like that. I have like in my family, they drink lots of alcohol. And I also agree with the discipline yes. since I do my uh, yoga training teacher in Rishikesh. <laughs> uh, I have more, way much more discipline. I woke up very early to do the practice. I came back to the spirituality and prayers and, and that's really a nice path. And uh, for, for sure yoga, uh, yoga is, can be a therapy and yoga helps us to go beyond um, lots of addictions yes. and to talk about it, talk about addictions and uh, uh, to a group of people is really nice. That can help. And also to face like, okay, I feel good when I am alone. That's, that's also a very uh, nice blessing that you had. So I'm happy for all your divine interventions. And uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else has any question or someone wants to share something? Please go ahead. OK, maybe I want to ask something. Uh, how was um, when you discovered that it was good to uh, to wake up early and to stop drink alcohol and to make something that you really like? How to be balanced and not doing too much, like um, doing too much discipline or uh, I don't know if it's clear. Like the um, balance, stop, uh, stop all the your previous life, and going in the new life, and you are going like very deeply. And uh, I feel for me maybe it's too much to, uh, to wake up very early, very very early, and stop doing lots of things. And I'm afraid like okay, if I continue, will I will be able to do it for a long period of time? I, I well. I think if you are able to, even if you don't pursue what's in your head, supposing you want to, you want to in your head want to wake up at four o'clock, but you're not able to wake up at four o'clock, I would just say you just observe this feeling. You know, don't push it. Don't push that I have to wake up at four. I have to. you just observe for some time and I have a feeling that it will come. Don't push yourself. Pushing is not a great idea, really. Mm -hmm. It is observation of what you feel. If you're just able to observe that I need to wake up at four, but it's not that I must, I must. You observe yourself and you it will come. It will come. Thank you. Thank you. So I agree with the Devu. Uh, the external uh, sort of things or the observances are an aid. They're not the essence of yoga. And uh, therefore, to be so obsessed with them that uh, any lapse with those external forms itself becomes a source of stress is not something worthwhile. Your practice of uh, genuine yoga will not be affected if uh, you are a little more uh, kind to yourself and uh, uh, but, uh, distinguish clearly between the form and the essence, the external features of yoga and uh, what is the spirit underlying it. The spirit and the essence should always dominate the external features. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Debu, sir, thank you so much for you. sharing your inspirational personal journey with all of us, the amazing transformation that we experienced and the help that you are offering to the newer generation. Thank you so much. Dr. Bilani, Thank thanks a lot for moderating this conversation. And of course, more importantly, for the valuable thoughts that you shared throughout the session. 
I thank the participants as well for being with us today. We can close today's session with a moment of peaceful silence. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.